thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Uh, I'm from Norfolk in the UK and today is my Monday mashup. So um, I'm actually using a brand new stamp set with you today. Um, I just wanted to let you see how beautiful this stamp set is. It's actually part of um, an absolutely stunning suite of products. But that's for another day. We'll save that. Um, all I wanted to show to you today was the actual stamp set and just to show you how uh, beautiful it, it looks um, when you can just use it on its own, really. So um, we're going to use various of the elements in this today. We're going to be using this beautiful word in here. We're going to be using uh, these two um, also as well. So um, hopefully you're going to like it we're going to be using what we call the faux silk technique now there's various ways you can do this it's um it's not a new technique it's been around for a long long while um, but it's always nice to sometimes just to to revisit some of these lovely techniques so today you're going to need um, a card base which is um, crumb cake so this measures 21 centimeters by 14.85 so this is our standard c6 card um, if you're in another market you can just use your standard base card then i have two basic white pieces um, which are uh, nine centimeters by 13.35 and again if you're in a different market just leave yourself a little border um, now one of these is for actually for the inside so I'm going to start off um, just by grabbing um, a piece of scrap paper to start with, which I'm going to use just to stamp onto because I'm going to be using water, which means I have to use um, an archival based solvent ink pad. So if you're using something like alcohol markers, like our stamping blends, then you would need, you would certainly not want to be using a solvent ink pad because the two solvents would mix effectively. So you're looking for opposites. So if you're using water, you want solvent. And if you're using a solvent pen, alcohol pen, then you want something that's not solvent. So then we would look to go for our memento ink. So it's just a, a rough guide. So always think opposites attract. That's the way I always remember it. So I'm going to start off with the um, beautiful sort of ferny, I don't know what you'd call it really. It's a wild flower, um, but it's beautiful. So it stays on ink and I'm just going to ink it off to the side here. So this is going to be my front piece and then I'm going to do the same for the inside but this time I'm only going to be using a little bit of it just in the corner just to give a little hint to the front when we actually get round to um, putting our card together. Okay, so we'll start with that and then we're going to paint these and then we're going to add some other additions to it afterwards. Okay, so I've just got a pot of water um, Obviously that's been used a little bit, so just normal tap water um, and a little paintbrush. Now I'm using just a normal little paintbrush. Uh, this is a size one um, and it's just, I find it a lot easier to use something really fine for what we're trying to achieve. You could use your um, right marker pens, but that tends to give it a harsher look. We're looking for quite a soft look today. So I'm going to start off with um, old olive ink. So I just want to squish some ink into my lid of my ink pad. Oh, and grab yourself a piece of tissue kitchen roll as well, just so that you can blot off any of the excess colour. Now, I want to mix up a little bit of this, but I don't want it to be um, absolutely saturated. So just mix it up a little bit just to make it free flowing and then I'm just going to block my brush here and what I want to do is I want to follow the outline the black line that we've stamped with the old olive ink so I'm not taking too much care I'm just literally just following those lines don't worry if they um, go over the edges a little bit we want this to be quite sort of flowing, quite um, kind to the eye. We don't want it to be too harsh. So don't don't sort of take too much time over it. You're quite able to just sort of flow with it, really. Okay. 
and the same with these wispy bits so I'm just using the end of my brush just to sort of add some little wispy bits and I'm not necessarily following exactly the line of the ones on the paper I'm just literally sort of just doing them at sort of different heights and different levels and I say don't don't be worried if you go like I just did there where I wasn't really meant to go just fill it in a little bit and add some more green this is nature after all so we're just looking for something that's a little bit sort of whimsy really okay so that's my inside in the green I'm just going to bring my outside and I'm going to repeat again for um, the outside. Now, obviously, this one's the whole image, so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you just do exactly the same as I just did. Okay, so that's my green done. Now what I want to do is to add um, some little colour to these little sort of berries stroke flowers. I'm not really sure what they are, if I'm honest, um, but they're obviously um, like a wild flower. So I'm going to be using bumblebee this time because this is quite a nice rich colour. Again, we want it quite rich because when we use the faux silk technique, which we're going to be using um, in a short while, you'll see that um, the colours do sort of um, go a lot lighter. So don't be afraid to sort of be a little bit more vibrant with your colours. And again, all I'm doing this time really is almost like little blobs. So I'm roughly following where the little blobs are on, on the actual branches, but I'm not too worried if, if they're sort of going off a little bit. So don't don't worry too much. Okay, so you can see that I've now completed both of those. Um, and what I want to do now is to add the other little flower into it. Now, the reason I didn't do it all at once, you'll see in a moment, it's actually quite hard to see where some of the other flowers have stamped. So that's why we don't want to, we didn't want to do it all at one time. So this is the little stamper I'm using this time. So this is the sort of little double flower. And again, stays on ink. I'm not going to put any on the inside because I think the inside is fine as it is. Um, and I'm going to add some of these. Now, I'm stamping over the top of where I've just been. So you will lose some of that detail, okay? Um, but don't worry because we're going to fill it in in a second. Um, okay, I think that will be... I might just put a little one into that little gap there. There we go. Okay, so this time I'm going to be using Evening Evergreen and then our little berries on this one are going to be Blackberry. So I just give this another little squish. Okay, so I'm going to be doing exactly the same. And this time um, I'm just going to be filling in those leaves in this solid colour. Um, but I probably will just peter out the colour just a little bit 
it's such a rich color that it's quite difficult um, to when you're doing it at speed to sort of peter it out completely but what I want to do is just to sort of blend it in a little bit so we have some slightly lighter and slightly darker leaves and what I do is I just sort of wiggle my brush again we're not taking any great deal of uh, time with this we're literally just getting that sort of colour onto our leaves and again the little stems as we did before just use the end of your brush just to give them some colour now obviously I've gone over the one that we painted a little while ago um, but these are darker colours so these are going to cover it quite nicely but what you do just need to be careful of is that you're following sort of where it's stamped and if you're unsure the best thing to do is just to have your stamp next to you and then you can kind of follow and you can kind of see where where you're going with it a bit more but again don't worry too much this is nature we're we're sort of creating so You see that dark colour just covers what's underneath. Okay, so that's our green done. Let's clean my brush off again. And this time I'm going to be using Blackberry Bliss. I've probably got enough in the lid there. Incidentally, I don't wipe these out when I'm done. I make sure they're obviously not too wet before I close my, my lid, but I always keep what's in there because you can use it um, time and time again so don't don't clean them up they're like a, a separate paint palette really Okay, so I think we're quite okay. I think we've got enough colour on there. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just to add a little bit of colour into the background of my piece. Um, so I'm going to actually just use the little bubble stamp so it's just to add a little bit of texture just to sort of all over it really um, and then we're going to do the faux silk so I'm just using crumb cake and I'm going to randomly in first and second generation do some little background dots now I don't mind if they're over the image because this is just adding some texture to everything so don't you know don't be afraid to like I even use third generation there so don't you know don't be frightened to as I say this will be really subtle once it's all done I'm purposely leaving this area because this is where my greeting is going to go 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is our faux silk technique. So this is going to be using tissue paper. So this is just your normal tissue paper that you would buy to wrap a present or something like that. Now there's various ways to do this. Um, you can use um, a solid glue stick, so something like a Pritt stick, um, or there's lots of other brands that are, um, you know the ones I mean, which are in a sort of wind up sort of um, solid block glue. They're really good for this, or alternatively, what you can use is our adhesive sheets. Now, um, the adhesive sheet I've got here is one that we used to stock, and I had quite an abundance of it in my supply, so I'm using that today but we have got new ones that you can actually purchase from us. So these are just adhesive sheets and I'm going to peel off the back. Now, they all vary as to which one is the back. So let's just take this off. There we go. Once you start, you're fine. So I know on this one that this is the sticky side and this is just the backing. So I'm going to peel that off and then very carefully I'm going to stick my card just down onto it. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger than I need, that's absolutely fine. It's better to have it a little bit bigger. And then what we'll do is we'll fold these sections over, um, which will hold our paper in place anyway. And then these sections at the side I will probably trim once we're done. Okay, so now what I want to do is just to run my fingers over this, just to burnish it, just to make sure that all the stick is on. And you might even want to get um, something like a bone folder and it's particularly around the edges because that's where it tends to lift when you take the backing off. Okay, so now that that's all stuck down, I'm going to peel from the back. Okay, and just as I say, just, just these edges, just be careful as you peel it back. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to take my tissue paper, which I'm then going to screw up. So I just want to ruffle it up a little bit. I don't want it too much, but I do want it to be, um, sort of have crease marks sort of all over it really. Just torn it a little bit there, but it, that doesn't matter because it will stick down in a second. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm lightly opening it out. And now what I want to do is to lay this on top. So I'm gonna lay it over my picture and little by little, I'm gonna just rub it down. So can you see you start to get all these little ridges. Now this is where my little tear was, but that's fine because my greeting is going to be there shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to lift that and then just tuck over any edges onto your reverse. Tissue paper is obviously very light, so um, don't worry too much. You're not going to get too much bulk. Um, if things aren't stuck down like this, then we can just add a little bit of glue or whatever just to make it stick. If we have any really bad ex excess, then we'll just trim them. We just want to make sure it's all nice and neat. You can, of course, trim this level with the edge if you want to, um, but I quite like to fold it over because you get um, that sort of overall finish 
onto the reverse. Okay, so can you see that's really, really subtle now in the background of, of our card? And that's what we were trying to achieve. So that's why I said the um, you won't worry too much about laying your colour down because this is um, I knew how the end result would be a lot softer. So don't um, so don't be surprised, you know, if if the colour's really, really light. Okay, so that is our faux silk technique. Now it's very, very light, as I say. We're going to bring our card in, um, and in a second I'm going to um, mount this as well. Um, but you can see at this stage whether you like it the way it is, whether it's subtle enough, um, whether it's too subtle, however you like it. Now, the one thing I do like to do if... Um, if I feel that it, it's a little bit too subtle, it's not quite doing what I want it to do, then I will just take um, a paintbrush. Now this has got like a bigger end on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up a little bit of PVA glue. So this isn't our Tombow glue, this is PVA glue. You need a glue that's going to dry um, clear. Okay, so I'm going to just take a little bit of PVA. I don't want a great deal. And I'm going to mix it with some water. So I want it to be quite sort of watered down. Maybe even a little tad more. Okay, now what I want to do is just to go over the top in this watery solution. Okay, so what it starts to do, it starts to bring through some of that colour from underneath. It makes it a little bit more vibrant. Now, obviously, this is a glue, so if you wanted to, you could at this stage add some other little embellishments, some glitter, for example. Um, you could use all, all sorts of things, really. But can you see how that's just starting to bring that through? a little bit more and what it does it makes that tissue kind of transparent but not to the extreme you don't want this to um, to fall apart and what it will also do it will give it a little sheen as well when it's done okay so I'm going to lift that and let it dry and just clear up where my glue was. Now, ideally you want this to dry thoroughly. So I would leave it, um, you know, a good sort of 20 minutes or so just to, to go off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave mine and then I will come back to it um, and we'll do the next stage. Okay, so I actually sped mine up by using a heat gun on it just to, to make it actually um, dry quicker. Um, it is still a little bit tacky in places, so I'm going to need to be careful, but um, I can at least continue with what I was doing. So can you see now how this is, is showing a little bit better than it was um, before it was very opaque and you couldn't really see a great deal of it. So this one is um, just by doing that, it's just lifted it that little bit. And what I want to do is I want to stamp this actually directly onto my piece here. So um, I'm going to use Blackberry Bliss. 
Now I want to be a little bit careful um, that I don't get ink anywhere I don't want it because any I'm going directly onto my piece remember so um, if I get anywhere I don't want it then I shall be quite upset. So I'm just carefully inking. It's better to do little taps just to make sure it's nicely coated rather than um, squish it down and I always say to my ladies um, kiss don't squish so we kiss we don't squish and hopefully that will stick in your head okay so this is now going to go in this gap here unfortunately all of these um, words are all at different angles so I don't have to worry too much about lining it up so there we go that's gone on really well really pleased with that Okay, so if I start by sticking my one in the center, because then I know that I'm sticking the right ones. Okay, now this is going to go on here and this one is just going to be on top. Now you could either stick it flat or you could raise it up, um, whatever you want to do with it. Now I can see I have just very, very lightly caught, obviously it wasn't quite dry. Um, I've just caught, can you see a little bit here? So I'm just taking a damp paintbrush and I'm just trying to wash that out a bit without touching my letters. Once that dries, hopefully that will virtually disappear. Okay, so I'm going to stick this flat so that I know it's definitely flat onto my um, white piece and then I'm going to mount the white piece onto dimensionals. I'm going to stick this down before I have another go at that. And what I will do, um, if I can't um, get it off completely, then I would either do a greeting onto another piece and stick it over the top, or I would uh, stick a little gem there, which is possibly going to be my option. As I say, I would normally have allowed it to dry completely on its own, and that way I wouldn't have had to worry um too much about that but i want to get it done so that you can see just what it looks like and i'm just going to try another little wash sometimes you can do this sort of two or three times and it will just lighten every time and i'm going to take a clean piece of tissue just a little piece and blot so don't panic if this happens to you just well it shouldn't do because you'll allow yours to dry completely but don't panic can you see it's starting to lift that okay I'm not going to touch it anymore for a moment so this is going to be on here um, I think on dimensionals I think it will be quite nice Okay, so Okay, so also in this suite of products, we have this beautiful gold shimmer vellum. Um, it's absolutely beautiful and there's lots of gold elements that run through this. I don't want to give it away too much because there'll be some more um, demonstrations and stuff, but it, it's just absolutely beautiful. And in the actual dies, we have these lovely little leaves. So what I've done is I've cut the leaves from the gold shimmer paper and I'm just going to pop 
just three of these onto my card. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put, I don't mind if they move a little bit, so I'm just going to put a little dot of glue just on the actual ends of my leaves. I'm going to pop these just down. So I'm, I'm quite happy for them to curl up a little bit, which obviously vellum does do. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to, just with some linen thread, tie a little bow. Okay, and I'm going to leave my towels nice and long on this. And again, I'm just going to use a tiny dot of Tombow. You could use a glue dot for this, but I'm just using a little bit of Tombow because the, the actual knot is really tiny. Okay, so... Um, that's our card finished now obviously i still have this little mark up here which is going to annoy me so i'm going to grab some of our little opal rounds so these are really really pretty as well and i'm going to add a couple of those to the card these are new to me i've not used these before so um you know they're really really beautiful they've got like an iridescence to them i'm hoping you can see it in the camera so I'm just going to take one of the, the dots. Actually, that's going to be too big, I think, for, for this. So I'm going to have to live with my little mark, I think. But there we go. So that's our little card today. Um, that is using the faux silk technique, which obviously gives you this texture. Um, as I say, when you when you do yours, just make sure it's dry because that's all that was was just that little piece. And um, uh, I don't think anyone else would notice, but obviously I will. So it, it will annoy me. But just um, just bear it in mind and just make sure you let everything dry completely. So I hope you like that today. Um, it's just another little technique that's something a little bit different. Um, this is the beautiful stamp set. The little hint I will give you is that um, the Blackberry Bliss runs through this suite a lot. Um, so it is really, really stunning. But I wanted to use this in a more subtle way. So I hope you like that. Um, I hope you'll give it a go. Let's say Prit Stick or something like that is absolutely fine for this technique. Okay, I will see you next week. Take care, bye.